but we're going to cover routing protocols now. Uh, the routing protocols that um, uh, Pico supports are static. Um, that's not really a routing protocol, but we do support static static routes. Uh, RIP version 2, OSPF, BGP, either external or internal BGP. Uh, we also uh, will cover, um, at some point, uh, bidirectional uh, forward detection, uh, VRRP, and uh, ECMP. So static routes. Static routes are the most simple and easiest to set. Uh, we'll go into configuration mode and we'll run set protocols, static route, put in a static route to a subnet, for example, specify our next hop, and this is the interface that is currently providing access to that subnet. So it may be another router, it may be a, uh, for one, it has to be a, uh, a, a, an IP address that we can already ping directly, one that's directly connected, and then we will specify 192.168.2.5, for example. And that would mean that we would have to have an IP address in the subnet 192.168.2.567, um, whatever, and that we could reach 2.5 from our system to get to that route 10.10.1.0. So that's how you set up static routes. Once you have configured the static route, then um, you can view the static routes using run show route table IPv4 unicast static and that will show you all static routes that are configured there are no static all right next we'll cover how to set up OSPF so the steps to set up OSPF are as follows first we have to set the router ID and Let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Um, this system is already set up with OSPF. So we're going to do a show um, display set match um, OSPF4. And you can see here the first command you're going to run is set protocols OSPF4 router ID. And you give it an IP address that will be used to uniquely identify it within your network. The types of areas we support are normal stub area and not so stubby area. You will need to configure the uh, the area. Um, so in general we'll configure an area zero which is what's been configured here. Set protocols OSPF area zero and we tell it what type it's going to be. By default it is area type normal for um, zero, we're going to set a loopback address, which is going to be different than the router ID. We set it with this command right here. Set protocols OSPF area zero loopback address 10.226.14.203. Then we'll go about configuring the interfaces. So we've already got an interface created, a VLAN, and we're going to have to run this command called set protocols. Area 00, zero you know, let's put it in the same area, interface VLAN 4001 with that VIF and this address, and we label this one as passive. What a passive interface uh, does, an OSPF passive interface, means that um, all interfaces that uh, have a network that falls within the range of the network command will be advertised in OSPF and OSPF hello packets are sent on these interfaces. Under normal circumstances uh, within OSPF, when you specify your um, OSPF area assigned to an interface and don't have the passive on there, that will uh, mean that OSPF hello packets are sent on that interface. and um, all interfaces that have a network that falls within the range of the network command will be advertised within OSPF. However, when you uh, specify that a uh, interface is passive, it tells OSPF not to send hello packets on that interface. 
If you need to tweak the uh, interface for OSPF, you can do so by entering this command right here, set protocols for a particular interface with the address and add additional variables to it. You have the option to specify the hello interval, the interface cost, transmit delay, among other variables. One of the most common things that we do with an OSPF is we will redistribute routes learned from other sources into the OSPF uh, routing database. Uh, one of the most common ones is redistributing what we call static routes, directly connected routes. Um, so here's how you would do that. So the first thing that you will do is you will create a policy statement. So set policy, policy statement, connected. This is just the name you give it, connected, static, whatever you want to call it. In this case, we are taking, uh, one, we have to define this term, right? So it's kind of like a, uh, um, a firewall rule. Um, so we're going to uh, assign it a term, which means one. So one's going to be the one we're going to use, and then eventually we're going to um, accept it, right? So term one, from protocol connected. That means we're going to get all the connected routes that show up, and also we're adding in a particular one. This is from a particular IPv4 network. So we're also saying that this network is going to also be included in this connected policy statement and then we're going to accept it. The last step that we do is um, exporting that new policy into OSPF. And so we'll show that one, OSPF4, export, and here's the command itself. Set protocols, OSPF4, export, connected. So we're taking the information that we've done here by this particular policy, connected and we are setting protocols OSPF4 to export connected so we're in essence redistributing static routes. So how do we show OSPF? How do we make sure that it's working properly? Well you have a few different commands. One that kind of covers everything is show route, forward route. Uh, I forgot to do my run command first. All right run show route forward route ipv4 all and this shows me all the routes that i have learned now say we just want to look at the ospf pieces so we can do a show route table IPv4, unicast, OSPF. Those are the routes that I have learned via OSPF. Now let's talk about maybe some of the specifics to OSPF. Show route, table, oh, route, I can choose a few different options here. Brief, detail, terse, and winners. Uh, terse is actually pretty useful because it shows you in a very short format um, where your next hop is and where the destination network is. Uh, another one that's very OSPF uh, centric, run show, IP OSPF, database. Sorry, I got that one wrong. It's run show OSPF4. And then you have lots of different information you can put out. Database, which has a lot of options where I can show the actual contents of the database. And we can do that in brief mode. Those are the routes we have learned and the type of each route. Uh, some other ones that might be useful. Uh, detail. It'll show quite a bit more information. So that's a, a very useful one to use. Uh, show OSPF. You can also run the command, run show OSPF4 interface brief. And then the last one, run show OSPF4 neighbor.
and that shows us who we have and the state that we're in.